Hello, I'm David Kerr and you are watching Shalom World News. Here's your latest news headlines from around the globe. A Catholic priest has been abducted and killed by kidnappers in Nigeria. The body of Father John Gabakin of the Diocese of Mina was found dead on Saturday morning near the Labata Lape Road in Niger State. It was there 24 hours previously that he and his younger brother had been abducted at gunpoint while returning from their mother's home in Benu State. Father Gabakin's brother is thought to be still in the hands of his abductors. According to reports, the kidnappers had initially demanded a ransom of nearly $70,000 from the Diocese of Mina for the brothers' release, but had later reduced that figure to $12,000. The Ecumenical Christian Association of Nigeria have described the killing of Father Gabakin as, quote, shocking and painful, and they are again calling upon the Nigerian government to help end the abduction of clergy and religious across the country. The United States is suffering from an unravelling of the common moral fabric that has held it together for nearly 245 years. That's a stark warning of the Archbishop of Denver, the Most Reverend Samuel Aquila, writing in his diocesan newspaper. Archbishop Aquila reflects upon the events of the past year which have seen violent unrest across the United States provoked by all sides of the political spectrum. Archbishop Aquila said it was becoming increasingly rare to find someone or some organisation that is seeking the common good. Thus, he suggested, only the person of Jesus Christ can, quote, repair the weakened moral fabric of society. Archbishop Aquila encouraged Catholics to, quote, break away from the constant flow of information in order to spend more time with the sacraments and with the Bible. He concluded by reminding his readers that Christians are, quote, made for heaven and are thus called to build up the kingdom of God and not, he said, a utopia on earth. He also urged people to see their political friends and enemies as primarily sons and daughters of God the Father. Pope Francis has offered prayers for the people of Sulawesi Island in Indonesia who were struck by an earthquake on Friday, leaving at least 70 people dead. Speaking after his Sunday Angelus, the Holy Father said he was praying for the deceased, for the wounded, and for all those who lost their homes and jobs. He also prayed that God console and sustain the efforts of all those who are engaged in bringing aid to the stricken. The earthquake registered 6.2 on the Richter scale. More than 800 people were injured by it, with nearly 15,000 people being forced to find refuge in temporary shelters. Meanwhile, Pope Francis also prayed for the 62 souls who were killed on January the 9th when a Boeing 737-500 crashed into the sea off Indonesia just minutes after its takeoff from the capital city of Jakarta. May they rest in peace. One in eight Christians around the world suffers persecution. That's the startling claim of a new report produced by the non-governmental organisation Open Doors who campaign on behalf of persecuted Christians. In their 2021 World Watch list released on January the 13th, they estimate that more than 340 million Christians worldwide face persecution in over 65 countries. For the 20th time in the history of the World Watch list, North Korea tops the chart as worst persecutor. The secretive communist state is then followed by Afghanistan, Somalia, Libya, Pakistan, Eritrea, Yemen, Iran and Nigeria. One country that has dropped down the Open Doors rankings from 7 last year to 13 this year is Sudan. During that time, the African state has taken measures to improve religious liberty, including changing its constitution to end the death penalty for those who apostatize from Islam. The United States' annual March for Life is to go virtual. The yearly gathering has taken place in Washington, D.C. every year since its inception in 1974. In fact, it's now become the world's largest human rights march. It was due to take place this year on January the 29th. On Friday, however, the event organisers announced that they had decided to make this year's march virtual due to a recent rise in COVID cases across the U.S. and a heightened state of security in Washington, D.C. Hence, they are now asking participants to stay at home and join in the march remotely while a small group of pro-life leaders from across the United States march in the nation's capital. Speakers at this year's event include the former NFL football player turned baseball professional Tim Tebow. The Diocese of Lansing in Michigan has published a new policy on, quote, gender identity, which aims to ensure that Catholic entities such as parishes and schools can safeguard those in their care from contemporary gender ideologies while also fostering the highest standards of pastoral care for those with gender dysphoria. The new policy was unveiled on January the 15th. It proposes that everyone, men and women, should acknowledge and accept their God-given biological sex and corresponding sexual identity as male or female. This is a path, says the diocese, towards an integral, sustainable and happy life. 
The document thus rejects, quote, gender ideologies, which propose that male and female are merely social constructs. It also rejects the treatment of gender dysphoria in the young with interventions such as puberty blocking drugs and cross sex hormones, labelling such practices as, quote, unproven, unethical, and unhelpful. The new Diocese of Lansing policy was developed in response to a 2019 Vatican document entitled Male and Female He Created Them, which also rejected any, quote, gender theory, which denies the difference in reciprocity in nature of men and women. President Donald Trump has proclaimed January the 22nd as National Sanctity of Human Life Day. In one of his last acts in the White House, the outgoing president issued a proclamation establishing the pro-life day in the national calendar for the fourth year in a row. The proclamation also labelled the Supreme Court decision of January the 22nd, 1973 that legalised abortion across the US as, quote, a constitutionally flawed ruling. President Trump said that, quote, restoring a culture of respect for the sacredness of life is fundamental to solving our country's most pressing problems. Meanwhile, President Trump has also issued an executive order calling for the establishment of a National Garden of American Heroes, which would include statues of dozens of notable citizens from across the history of the United States, including many prominent Catholics. Hence, the list includes statues of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, St. Catherine Drexel, St. John Nauman, St. Unibro Serra, Venerable Fulton Sheen, Venerable Augustus Tolton, Dorothy Day and the late Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia. It remains to be seen if the incoming administration of President-elect Joe Biden will continue with the National Garden Project or not. That's all for now. Do join me next time for some more news headlines from around the globe. Until then, may God bless you. Shalom.